It's been just over a year since Tesla's full self-driving team has changed to an end-to-end -end network, and in that time, they've made amazing progress. And if you can believe Ashok Eliswamy, head of Tesla's FSD program, they are going to make unprecedented progress in the months to come. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I'm gonna start with this little gif because it actually has something to do with Full Self Driving 12. And that was that Green Element actually asked me whether I'd gotten version 12.3 yet. And I said, someday my FSD will come, you know, with the Snow White thing. So yes, unfortunately I don't have that. And to the Tesla AI team, um, <laughs> I don't know how to request that I get Full Self Driving. It has almost nothing to do with me actually getting it when I get it. It just has to do with the fact that I have been roasted all day long since everybody else that I know got Full self-driving, including Scott Walter, who I have rechristened from going ballistic on X to going to make me cry because he is relentlessly roasting me for not having full self-driving 12.3. Anyway, enough of my personal life issues. Let's go on to the story at hand, the important stuff here. So I'm going to start with my response to this or my repost. And that is, I said, Ashok is not a man for hyperbole. Unprecedented progress in Tesla full self-driving should be taken seriously when he says it. So what specifically did Ashok say? Well, let's take a look at this thread. So he said this 15 hours ago as I record this, motivating to see the overwhelmingly positive response to our latest full self-driving version 12 release, which is 12.3. Kudos to the incredible team at Tesla. It's an honor to work with them every day. And just for a random sampling of people that I know that have full self-driving and have been driving that around, Omar or Homar's catalog has it. Chuck Cook has it now, Farzad has it now. Like I said, Scott Walter has it, AI Driver has it, and I'm sure there are many, many other people I just don't know offhand, but that is already a pretty good handful of people that have it. And except for Holmar's catalog, pretty much nobody else had it until a day or two ago. So this is a great indication that full self-driving version 12 is going to a much wider release. And you know, with luck, I, I tend to get it like four or five days after Scott does. So, you know, if 12.3 goes out wider and they don't stop it for some reason, I should see 12.3 myself sometime this week. That'd be my guess. And from pretty much every review I've seen, they, there are still problems with it. It's still not perfect, but it is a major step change in the ability of the car to operate like a human and to take care of many of the niggling problems that have been going on. For example, things like windshield wipers, turn signals, hesitancy around pedestrians, etc. So it looks like a major change, but the really important part is the rate of change of progress going on here. And that's what we're gonna talk about in the rest of this video, starting with Ashok's thread here. Anyway, he says, this is the first version of full self-driving that uses neural networks end-to-end. -end. In other words, going from raw camera videos and vehicle kinematics to producing control actions to drive the vehicle. If you haven't seen my videos on what this is exactly, definitely check them out up here. I will also leave a couple of them at the end of this video so you can check them out and understand this better if you happen to not understand what end-to-end -end networks are about. And then the really cool part of this thread is, efforts over the past several months went into making this new approach beat the previous V11 stack, developed over many years, and that's what I'm currently driving myself. We believe V12 has net surpassed it now, and hence the next set of 12.x releases should bring unprecedented progress. And again, like I said in my repost, Ashok is not the kind of person who is prone to hyperbole. He's a pretty calm, rational, reasonable person, especially in posts, public posts and things like that. So when he says something like this, you can really take it to the bank. You know, this isn't somebody just pumping up the stock or something along those lines. This is someone, if he says something like this, you can believe it. So why is the current state of the art such a big deal? And why is it a big deal that we should see unprecedented progress in the next couple of releases? We'll take a look in just a minute, but first, I don't know about you, but all this brain work makes me hungry. However, going to the grocery store and figuring Figuring out a menu for food for the week is more than I can handle most weeks. And that's where Hungry Root, today's sponsor, comes in. Hungry Root is my partner in healthy living, and they make it all so easy. Take a fun quiz, and Hungry Root learns who you are and what you like to eat, and their sophisticated software serves up the best choices for you each week, both meals and snacks. Each week, Hungry Root sends you personalized meals, and you're always in control. Let Hungry Root pick your meals and groceries for you, or edit your shopping cart to your heart's content. Either way, the more you use Hungry Root, the better it gets to know your tastes and the more you'll love what you get. I particularly like that I can get vegetarian and pescatarian meals, which is great for me, and I can easily look at
at the ingredients of everything on their website, which means I can check to be sure I can stick to my no refined sugar diet. The snacks are delicious and the meals are easy to cook with clear instructions, or you can mix and match things in your fridge and make up something different if you prefer. Last night I made cheesy red bean quesadillas, super simple to make and so delicious. Is this making you hungry? Well, the first 100 people to use my promo code DRNO40 will get 40% off their first order of Hungry Root. I love food, but too often I'm too busy to devote the time and mental energy to make the best meals and snacks for myself. With Hungry Root as my partner, I no longer have to worry about that, and I'm sure to get the best, most healthy food possible, all delivered right to my door. Thanks again to Hungry Root for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check out my link to save 40% off your first order, and now let's get back to it. So let's start with the current state of the art. Right now, I'm still driving version 11.4.7. something or other. It's been, it's been that way for a while. But anyway, up to version 11, so starting, let's say, around 2015, 2016, back when Andre Carpathy was head of all these things, we had Tesla move away from using Mobileye and NVIDIA and creating their own hardware and their own software stack to solve full self-driving. And they started off with a great deal of heuristic code. In other words, they had human beings figure out what the car should do in any given circumstance. And they started off programming this about a decade ago, almost a decade ago, you know, 2015-ish. So let's call it eight to nine years ago. And this heuristic code combined with vision systems and things like that, which were older versions of artificial intelligence, they actually did a really good job and they were actually quite excellent on the highway, limited access, relatively controlled environments. They did really well. They worked on single vision frames at a time. That was just, you know, one image at a time. So they had no real sense of time, but they did very well considering what they were and relatively speaking how primitive they were. They did really, really well in those situations. They did not translate to city streets or more complex environments with pedestrians, cyclists, crosswalks, lights, stop signs, all of that kind of stuff didn't work very well. So as Andre Carpathy talked about in several of his talks, you know, Tesla started moving away from software 1.0, which is hard coded, human coded kind of stuff to software 2.0, which is based on neural networks. And Tesla was doing this back in the late 20 teens, 2017, 2018, 2019, back before the, you know, basic Cambrian explosion of deep neural network type of stuff with chat GPT, large language networks, diffusion models, mid journey, stable diffusion, et cetera, et cetera, right? So they were doing this before this gigantic explosion of generative AI. They were pointed in the right direction, but they never fully went from software 1.0 where they were creating everything by hand to software 2.0 where the entire system is end-to-end -end neural networks, photons in to controls out as Elon Musk likes to say. And then according to Walter Isaacson's book, somewhere around December of 2022, so let's call it 15 months ago or so, several of Tesla's full self-driving engineers came to Elon Musk and the team and they pitched this end-to-end -end neural network, which kind of threw out a lot of the heuristic code and said, we think we can do a better job with this than doing a mixture of different expert systems like Tesla had been using before. And that system, again, according to Isaacson's Musk biography, by April of 2023 was good enough that Elon Musk was like, yeah, we're all in on this. We should definitely, you know, switch our efforts to making a version 12 of the software that's end to end. And then if we skip forward to August, I believe 25th of 2023, we had a shock and Elon get in a car and do a demo drive of version 12 point, you know, whatever. It was very much alpha software at that point. And it did really, really well. It did make one mistake at a light, but again, this was basically alpha software we were talking about here. Wasn't ready for public release, obviously, since we're looking at many, many months later before it's going out to wide release, but it was an indication of just how good version 12 of the software was, which of course takes us to today with version 12.3 of the software and the fact that it's at least as good as and maybe better than version 11 of the software, which took, you know, the better part of a decade to develop. Let's just, you know, maybe if we want to minimize that, we could say seven years, but basically in 15 months, version 12 of the software, which was a whole clean sheet rewrite, as far as I understand it, that became as good as something that took them seven or eight years to build. And that is a very impressive achievement. That's a really fast rate of progress for this new end-to-end -end neural network and a very positive indication that we might get to actual autonomous driving sooner than people think now. Again, to be clear, I've always been very optimistic about this and I've been thinking for years that we would get to it by the end of the year, as have other people like Elon Musk, but notably Ashok has not been one of those people. So like I said, he is not prone to hyperbole. He's a pretty calm and you know rational person and 
he's very, very conservative in terms of his predictions. So the really cool part is we are now at parity. So we, let's say that we have version 12 of the software and we have version 11. 11 has been around a long time. Version 12 was way, way, way down here when it started by let's say April or something of last year, but it hasn't even been a full year and it's risen to the level of matching version 11. And the cool part is that with end-to-end -end neural networks, it's much, much faster to scale up and get better because it just requires retraining, more data, more curated data, more you know quality data, more training compute, all of that kind of stuff, which is what Tesla is really good at gathering. And I'm sure a lot of their full self-driving team just works on that stuff. In fact, I've talked to them about that, so I know that that's true. So anyway, the fact that it's gotten up to the level of version 11 and even potentially better than version 11 in many ways is an incredible indicator of the fact that it's going to get substantially better very, very quickly. And that's what Ashok is talking about here. He says the next set of 12.x releases, so 12.4, 12.5, whatever, should bring unprecedented progress. And what does unprecedented progress mean? Well, I'm not exactly sure because it's already very, very human. So we could be looking at something where it's going from 99.9% .9 of the time behaving human and making dumb mistakes once in a while. And that puts it in the realm of a very, very good driver, but not the best driver. We could be talking about the kind of changes that we could be going from a very good driver, but not the best driver to on the order of the best human drivers in that top, you know, 0.1% of human drivers in terms of the quality of their driving, the lack of accidents, the safety, their ability to get around in traffic and understand the nuances of traffic in North America specifically, of course, in this case. But the beauty of end-to-end -end neural networks is once you've got the basic weights for all of these things, you can fine tune it for Europe or China or even potentially a crazy place like India or something like that. You can take the base foundation model and you can fine tune it to work in many different environments, at least in like developed countries where things are relatively similar. I, I, I'm not going to make a prediction about a place like India or Nepal or something like that because the traffic there is absolutely madness. So <laughs> I don't I don't want to make a prediction there. But in terms of countries where traffic is relatively like the United States, it's relatively calm. People obey the rules most of the time. It should be able to fine tune to most of those other countries relatively rapidly given the weights that it has once it's good enough in the US and Canada. So again, we've taken 15 months to go from nothing to as good as the state of the art version 11 software right now. We could be looking at in the next two to three, and let's be generous, say six months, we could be looking at a step change again in terms of it being way, way better than version 11. In fact, most people who drive version 12 of the software, I, I talked to Chuck, I've talked to Scott, I've talked to a lot of people, and they're like, this is, you know, significantly better. So let's not even say it's equivalent to version 11 right now. Let's say it's better than version 11 already. But the really cool part here is it's not going to take another several years to get better and better and better. It should just take the matter of months to get better. And Ashok has an inside kind of view of this, right? Because version 12.3 of the software was developed quite a while ago. It was trained quite a while ago. It's had to go through quality assurance, testing inside the company, small testing outside the company, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we could be looking at two to three months lag. And so Ashok can see what's coming two to three months from now, basically, because he's actually actively working on that right now, which means he's not making predictions. He's actually looking at the state of the art of the software right now and saying unprecedented change. So this is very, very exciting. And what it means is that people who are sleeping on this, people who are not paying attention and think that Tesla's full self-driving has gone nowhere for a long time, and it did feel like that in most of 2023, because clearly they shifted their resources away from version 11 of the software and towards version 12, which made sense, but it mean, meant that version 11 was pretty flat all year long, didn't really do that much. But as Tesla shifts to version 12, we should see incredibly rapid progress. It shouldn't take years to get this kind of iterative progress. It should be on the order of months now. And the biggest reason that it probably is going to take that long is just the quality assurance and safety and everything to make sure that the four or 500,000 drivers who are currently using full self-driving beta are not going to be put at unnecessary risk. So anyway, for people, whether they're investors or regulators or just the general public, if you're sleeping on Tesla's full self-driving right now, you are sleeping on an awakening giant. If what Ashok says here is true and there's no reason not to believe him, we're looking at at something that is going to get to be on the order of the best of humanity very, very quickly before the end of this year. As far as regulators are concerned, who knows when they'll actually approve these things.
things to drive themselves. But in terms of technology, I'm fairly confident that by the end of this year, we should be looking at something that is on the order of the best human drivers. And that is pretty remarkable. All right, so that's what I've got. Am I being too optimistic or am I being too pessimistic and it's gonna happen even faster than I think? Let me know in the comments. In the meantime, thank you so much to Hungry Root for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check out my link in the description to save 40% off your first order. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you.